and welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Charlotte Collins. This is my first show of 2021 and I must say it is so nice to be here. If you watched last week's show, you'll know we're following a slightly different format to usual and it's just me in the studio today. But we have a really strong lineup and a little bit of something for everybody. First up, Sherlock's style director, Lou Huff, is showing us five key pieces to invest in if you're looking for styles that will work season after season. Makeup artist extraordinaire, Zoe Taylor, is sharing some stellar skin and makeup advice. Plus, journalist Rosie Green is talking to Georgie about the breakup of her long-term relationship that resulted in her husband walking out after 20 years. However long a relationship that's ended has been, she has some tips and techniques on how to survive and why it might actually be a good thing. Plus, on a lighter note, if you're in need of a bit of healthy but delicious breakfast inspo, we have just the thing for you. All of that, plus Heather is back with her first hot list of 2021. But first, it's Lou and the investment pieces she's lasting after right now. I am a huge advocate of investing in your wardrobe, buying those special pieces you can wear time and time again, year after year, and make you just feel that little bit better every time you wear them. Those are the pieces that are gonna make an outfit, whether you're wearing something so simple. So I have picked out five pieces from Matches Fashion that I am loving right now, and I'm gonna show you how to wear them. So the first piece I'm gonna talk about is this amazing blazer from Wardrobe NYC, which really is the brand of the moment. They are nailing that luxe at leisure vibe, showing you how you can wear your comfy at home leggings and elevate it up with a seriously cool blazer. The brand, it was sort of founded on the idea that you would buy a couple of capsule pieces and mixing and matching them, you could make so many outfits out of them. I have styled it just with a simple cotton poplin shirt from With Nothing Underneath and a pair of split hem leggings from Tove. So very in line with the brand's aesthetic and how they style everything. But worth noting, it is expensive. Um, you know, a lot of these designer pieces come with a pretty hefty price tag, but they are worth the investment if you're gonna wear them time and time again. Also noting as well that a lot of the high street is so inspired by these designers. So hopefully you can still get some inspiration on how to wear them, even if it's not this exact one you are gonna be buying. I just love this blazer. I love the shape of it. It's a very boxy fit. It's got those exaggerated kind of 80s shoulder pads. This is an extra small, so it definitely is true to size. It's got, if I just, show you this really really fine houndstooth check um, to add a bit of depth and oh i just i love this the second piece i want to show you is this amazing denim blouse from isabel morant it is no secret at sheerlux that we are a big fan of a ruffle blouse um, and why not go denim if like me you are dressing from the waist up on your zoom calls then having a blouse with a bit of interest is really going to be your friend. I have styled it double denim because I think that's the kind of the way to maximise on a double denim look and it's the way that Isabel Morant styles it on the runway. So I have added a, also Isabel Morant, um, braided belt. You could definitely go with just a black leather one. Then a pair of boyfriend straight leg jeans. These ones are from Frame and a pair of old M&S boots, which again are another Isabel Moron copy, um, are super comfy, but there are so many great versions of these on the high street. A good black ankle slouchy boot, I think will work really hard in the wardrobe and you can't really go wrong. The next product I want to talk about was these amazing boots from Paris, Texas. Another brand that is having a serious moment, but definitely one to stay. These have been seen on so many celebrities and every influencer out there proving they seriously are a hot prod of the moment, but also a product that is going to last in your wardrobe. Knee-high boots aren't a new trend, but definitely one that comes around again and again, so you can see why they're worth the investment. These you could wear in so many ways, great with dresses, whether that is a knitted dress, a print dress, fab with skirts, and equally looking just as good with jeans as I'm wearing today, or even tucked into your sweatpants. Just goes to show with a fab shoe, you can really make any outfit just look that much cooler. 
Next up, another accessory. This is the Mansior Gabrielle cloud bag, which I have to admit was a contender for my wedding bag. And I actually seriously wish I had bought it now, seeing in the flesh. This is amazing. We obviously know that clutch bags have had a real resurgence, thanks to Bottega, especially in this sort of slouchy style. And this one is a real keeper. It also comes in a smaller size um, if the oversized look isn't for you. And it comes in a variety of different colors as well. But I love the really, really subtle, if you can see, um, blush detail on this. It is just amazing. And I really think, again, it's gonna go with all of your outfits, super comfy, just tuck it under your arm and you are good to go. So the final piece I wanted to show you is this cuff from Silvia Toledano. She is a Parisian designer, um, but all of her pieces are inspired by her childhood in Africa. So a lot of thick, chunky cuffs like this, amazing statement necklaces as well, which really can be the main piece of your outfit. So as you can see, I'm wearing a simple white shirt and then as soon as you add that, it just looks that bit cooler, more impactful and a real wow piece. You can so imagine these on a beach when you're on holiday with a gorgeous floaty dress, an incredible tan, and then just one piece like that. And it's kind of the showstopper, isn't it? God, can you even imagine being on holiday now? I cannot, but one can only dream. Also, all those gold details you can pick up with some fabulous hoops, slick back hair, gonna look amazing, but equally great with so many different tones. It's just gonna do all the talking for you. As always, everything will be linked in the show notes below. I can safely say that my matches wish list has grown even longer now, hopefully shown you some key investment pieces that are gonna add a bit more life and substance to your wardrobe right now. Thank you so much, Lou. The problem is I basically want all of those pieces. Coming up, makeup artist and Sherlax beauty contributor Zoe Taylor is here to answer nine beauty and skincare dilemmas. But first, content creator Summer Pine of the incredible House Curious has been sharing some really lovely recipes on her Instagram recently. And she's here today to give you a taste of what's in her repertoire. First up, it's breakfast pudding. <laughs> lockdown recipes. They're easy, with few ingredients, and most importantly, taste delicious. So, shall we get started? So we're gonna start off with one of my favorite recipes. My girls call it breakfast pudding, and it's delicious and healthy. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with two bananas. We're gonna peel and we're gonna mash them straight into the tin, use those muscles, and then we're gonna add one cup of oats. I've also used flax seeds, a whole cup of milk, and two whisked eggs. Whisk them up, put them into the pan. We're gonna add our fruit next. I've used raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries. And then once we've popped those in, we're then gonna put it in the oven on 180 for about 30 minutes. If by magic, it's all golden and brown, so you wanna take your knife and go around the edges, slice it up, and I promise you this is gonna be gone in seconds. Okay, let's start serving. Well, maybe we should do two slices because we are in lockdown and let's face it, we do serve it. And then we're gonna add some yogurt. You could just use yogurt and honey, but I'm gonna spice it up with some roasted almonds and some coconut. Oh, doesn't that look good? Okay, so now all we need to do is try and get it on our spoon, which I seem to be having some trouble doing, and um, pop that in your mouth for some deliciousness. I'm makeup artist Zoe Taylor and today I'm going to be answering all of your questions about makeup. Top tips for covering lines. It's impossible to cover lines. I'm just going to tell you that straight up. But the important thing is, is that we all know how to hide them. So by adding some kind of light reflecting fluid into your foundation base, or if you're not wearing foundation, into your moisturizer, I am loving Chanel's Le Beige Highlighting Fluid. It comes in a little pump and you just put a couple of drops into your foundation and put it all over your face. Instantly you look a lot brighter. And because you look so much more hydrated and 
beautiful and glowing. It can really disguise any fine lines. The other thing that I love to do is do the other area that can be a bit of a giveaway with the fine lines is the lip area. So what's really important is to remember to do some very good lip massage because this will help build the muscles around the mouth and in turn this will start to diminish all of those lovely fine lines that we're not that keen on. Any contour tricks? Well, I'm not massive on contour. I'm much more about creating something very fresh and beautiful. I don't want it to feel very packed on. And lots of people are very into wearing a lot of contour. For me, no. I like to use it in a very, very subtle way, just around the edges of the face. I use a big fluffy brush, and then I take it underneath my cheekbones, down each side of my nose, a little bit on my chin, jawline. I always shade in the neck a little bit darker because that can give you a bit of a jawline. So it's not about having this stripe here. It's about the whole thing feeling quite buffed in. Then using a very small little fluffy brush, one that you might use for your eyes, I then apply it where I want a little bit of extra detail. And often I do it around the lips before I apply lipstick because it can really help with a pout. The products I love to use for contouring have to be the NARS press powders. What makes these so great is that they're not contour products and they're not bronzers. They are skin products and so they're very highly milled which means that they blend in really really nicely and look very natural. Doesn't look like you're anything too packed on, never goes patchy, never goes blotchy, can't go wrong with it. Cream versus powder blusher. Well my personal preference would definitely always be cream. I love it. It's so fresh and you can just dab it on where you need it and it can just look like a flush rather than a big blush. However if you do have really oily skin I would definitely stick to a powder product or a creamed powder product. My favourite powder blushes have to be by Surat. I think that they are so beautiful and there are so many incredible colours that there's so much to choose from. My favourite cream blush has to be Stila. The convertible colour is an all-time fave. I know loads of you will already have it in your makeup kits and go back to it if you're not using it. It's lovely. It gives such a nice shine that really stays put. Three makeup mistakes that can age you. Well, the first one has to be about foundation. It's not always the colour that ages you, it's the formula. If you're wearing the wrong formula for your skin type, it can look a disaster. So if you've got a dry skin type, that's when you can really go for something that's really glossy. I love the Vita Liberata, the Beauty Blur. Now that's great because it gives a really lovely sheen on the skin that lasts. And then if you've got an oilier skin type, I would definitely go for Fenty because the formula is really high coverage. But if you don't really want to wear it high coverage, but you do have oily skin, you have an option where you can actually just add a little bit of foundation on your hand and a little bit of your own moisturizer, which probably if you've got oily skin is an oil-free formula. And then taking your brush, you just mix it together and then put it on your face. And you, you can shear it out a bit. It's a great, great formula for that. Another thing that people always get wrong is the lip color. And I think that this is really difficult to make the decision yourself about what color suits you. I think it's so hard. So I always say to everybody, look at the color that's in your lips. So if you have much more of an blue undertone, then the kind of colors like what I'm wearing today, this kind of very bluey red would really suit you. Whereas if you have much more yellowy tones in your lips and the pigment doesn't feel so deep, then you can definitely go for something that has much more of an orangey tone, much more kind of tangerines and corals and really pretty colors. But this can translate all the way through, right from nudes all the way to dark colors, because they all have very simply these two undertones and it's about getting the right one for you. The third mistake I think people make is when they go for a really ashy eyeshadow color. And actually, if you go for something a bit warmer, it can knock years off you. I'm really loving the Lottie palette. It's the mauve palette and it has so many shades in it and they're all really warm. Some of them are matte, some of them have a bit more of a shimmer through them, some of them are satin. It's a great place to start if you're not used to wearing any kind of warm colours and you're not quite sure where to begin. What is my favourite red lip colour? Well, I would have to say it is the NARS Dragon Girl. I'm wearing it today and it suits everyone and I use it so much in my kit and it is my go-to colour for me too. Best high street buy. Okay, so I would say it would have to be mascara. And I am a real fan of the Primark mascaras. They're great and you can really get 
what you want with the right formula and the right brush because I think it's all about the brush everybody's very particular about the sort of brush they want I know I certainly am and there are some really good options there and they really are good value for money if you're going to splurge on one thing in your beauty bag what should it be hmm, I would say without a doubt it would have to be brushes I just cannot get a really good finish on makeup with cheap brushes I've tried really really hard and I've tried so many of them but I have to say that my Kitco brushes are amazing and they're so beautifully made and they give a really good finish and they're super easy to use. One thing you should never bother splurging on mm, would have to be a brown eyeliner. I really think the drugstore eyeliners are excellent. I think black can be a bit more tricky because you want it to be really intense and really dark. But with the browns, I think you can get something really lovely at not that much of a price tag. Top tip for glowing skin. It is all about what you put on before you put your base on. And I have to say that the, despite the Augustinus Beta being extraordinarily expensive, it's worth every single penny. It's intelligent skincare, so it goes to where you need it. So if you have like a dry patch, it's gonna go there. If you have an oily patch, it's probably not really gonna go there. But I've got it on now, and I have to say, it really does transform your skin. My rules for great brows, try really hard not to pluck them. I know it's difficult, but try hard not to. It's all about a good brushed up brow and some good brow gel. I love the glossy brow gel, the boy brow. It's so good. And it comes in such a small, cute little pot that it's so easy to just whack on and it really keeps everything in place. If you are gonna need to fill in your brows, which most people do a little bit, Always go for a your shade or a shade tiny bit lighter. Do never go darker because that can instantly look like big block brows and maybe you don't want to have that look. Maybe some people do want to have that look, but personally, I want brows to look very natural. Thank you so much for having me. I've loved answering all your questions. Welcome back. Thank you, Zoe. Such good tips as always. And how delicious did that breakfast recipe look? Next up. If you've been through a breakup, you'll know that it makes you sick to the bottom of your stomach and feels like your whole world has come crashing down around you. Few people know that better than Rosie Green. She joined Georgie to discuss all the survival techniques that you need to get through the end of a relationship, whether it lasted for six months or 15 years. But first, Sheerlux's lifestyle editor, Heather Steele, is back with her first hot list of 2021. She has some great recommendations for new movies, TV and food. And let's face it, that's all we need right now. Hello, my name is Heather Steele, I'm Lifestyle Editor at Sheerlux and these are my picks for January's Hot List. It's January so I thought I'd go down the wellness route a little bit. So I'm going to talk about the latest thing that I'm loving which is this bed of nails acupuncture mat. So you can get them from Cult Beauty over here in the UK but it's essentially looks a bit like a yoga mat but it's got loads and loads of little plastic spikes in and essentially what you're meant to do is lie on it every day for about 10 to 20 minutes depending on how long you've been doing it for and like acupuncture all the little spikes stick into your back and it's meant to do all sorts of things such as help you sleep at night pain relief aid circulation i've been using this one for about a week now and i've really noticed the difference i'm definitely sleeping better at night but yeah if you're looking for anything really that might help you sleep i definitely give this yeah bed of nails mat a go so The Dig is another one of those films that should have been on the big screen, but unfortunately as cinemas have been closed for so long, that's not the case at the moment, but thankfully um, The Dig is landing on Netflix next week. So it stars Carey Mulligan as a landowner who sort of discovers just before World War II that there's something really interesting buried on her land. So she enlists the help of a freelance archaeologist who's played by Ray Fiennes and together they sort of uncover this amazing discovery and from there it just sort of revels in their relationship and other relationships and just the narrative of discovery you know between her and her young boy as well and as you'd expect from a film like this there's amazing cinephotography, amazing scenery, great costumes, really good acting so yeah if you're looking for that sort of cinema experience at home I think The Dig is a lovely watch just a very and very nice experience to have at home. 
There's been loads of really, really good TV on already this month, or this year, should I say. But the one that I'm really excited about is It's a Sin, and it starts on Channel 4 later this week. So it's directed by Russell T Davies, who was the guy behind Queer of Folk back in the 90s, and he's more recently done the Doctor Who reboot. So It's a Sin, like its name suggests, like the Pet Shop Boys, it's kind of set in the 1980s around the AIDS epidemic within the gay community. So it stars Ollie Alexander from years and years as the sort of lead character and his sort of arrival in London and arrival within a sort of wider gay community and he's just sort of living his life and having a great time but obviously there's then this horrible backdrop of this illness that at the time seems to be killing gay men more than any other community in the UK so what you've got it sounds all doom and gloom but because it's Russell T Davis there's just so many uplifting moments and relationships and uh, you know amazing club scenes and dancing scenes with really amazing 80s music and it really is this sort of joyful exploration of the community and if you're looking for anything that's sort of joyful but also educational and you really get that feel for what it would have been like to live in that time and in that community it's definitely worth a watch. So this one isn't necessarily a dry jam recommendation, it's almost over now anyway, so not long to go. This is a new launch from the Cotswolds Distillery and it's essentially a gin essence, which means that it's a concentrated form of gin. So yeah, if you open it up and smell it, you sm still get that real nice gin smell, but you only need to put five tiny drops of this into a normal gin and tonic instead of your normal double serve and you'll end up with something that tastes really strong and nice and gin like but it's only got 10% of the alcohol as a normal gin and tonic so it's definitely something to try if you're maybe wanting to take it a bit easier than you have been or just want like a GNT at the end of the working day but you don't want like the full hit of booze. Yeah it's a nice new launch they recommend serving it in 200 mils of your favourite tonic water with a nice garnish of grapefruit peel and yeah like I say you just need to add five drops from the pipette and yeah you've got yourself a lovely gin and tonic without all the calories and without most of the booze. It's no secret that I'm a massive coffee fan and this is a new launch from Solo Coffee and it's a coffee concentrate which means that it's this real tasty espresso strength uh, cold brew coffee so it's been naturally filtered it's got all the good stuff in but it's all comes in this nice pack and you can do loads of different things with it. So if like me, you really like black coffee, you just need to put about 30 mils, I think it is, into your cup of choice. And then you can just top it up with either cold water and ice if you want like a nice cold brew coffee or hot water for a real nice sort of normal, sort of like an Americano type coffee. Or if you're more of a milky kind of person, you can make lattes and things with it as well using this concentrate. But best of all, it also makes for a real fuss free espresso martini so instead of having to you know muck up your coffee machine or if you haven't got a coffee machine you can just use this straight from the fridge and obviously use your vodka of choice and make a really nice and easy espresso martini and it's got no sugar in and it's made with brazilian coffee beans and coffee beans from colombia and it tastes absolutely great and it's definitely something that i'm going to be filling my fridge with because it's just so easy to use and yeah tastes totally delicious Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back next month to let you know of the things that I've been discovering and enjoying over the last four weeks. Uh, but yeah, take care and see you next time. Bye bye. I'm joined today by Rosie Green. She's had an esteemed career in the magazine world. She's worked at Vogue. She was beauty director at Elle and then at Red. And she's now been at Red as contributing editor for the last 10 years. Uh, Rosie, welcome. How lovely to see you from afar. This is a first for us doing a remote interview. So fingers crossed there aren't any technical hitches. How are you? Oh, I'm really good, thank you. And it's so nice to meet you. I've, you know, watched you on the screen and uh, I'm a massive fan of sheer luck. So I feel very lucky to be here. Oh, well, that's a huge compliment. I mean, we're here to talk about... Divorce, relationships, getting through breakups, finding your inner strength, resilience. 
It is no secret that divorce, uh, I think the statistics are something like uh, it being up 30 to 40 percent um, in the pandemic, which is a pretty staggering thing to read. Uh, you know only too well how difficult a thing it is to navigate. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit about um, your story, what happened to you? Um, you know, you went from a very happy marriage to to your husband telling you it was over, really. And, um, you know, gosh, yeah. I'm sure that's something that's familiar to many, but give us a bit of background as to, as to your story. I, I mean, I, um, I, you know, I was with my husband for, we met at 18. So, you know, we were together for a really, really long time. And he was this sort of very steady, moral kind of, uh, you know, he, he, he was the kind of constant in my equation, as it were. And so I... You know, we had very different jobs. He had this, you know, very sort of alpha job, and uh, I had this sort of fashion magazine job. You know, so we were very different, but we had a really lovely, stable relationship. And when I when I got to Red, I started writing a column actually about um, family life, and we had two small children. And I wrote about our kind of car being stuck together with raisins and being so tired at work that I would kind of the night before just have sort of pulled off my jeans and my underwear at the same time and then in the morning pulled the jeans back on and I remember being in this sort of meeting about a sort of celebrity cover and thinking you know what's that and the kind of my pants had sort of from last night had sort of found their way out of the bottom of the trouser leg so it's this kind of chaotic <laughs> world of kind of having young children and uh, you know he 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 sort of featured quite heavily in that sort of alpha male and um, then you know we sort of moved to the countryside. We had all that classic, you know, we did all those, you know, those steps that people do. And then... You were living the dream, really. Yeah, I was living the dream. And in fact, I remember I wrote this, the column, as I said, for Red, and the deputy editor, who who is a friend of mine, who's this lovely, lovely woman, and she was living a different life, you know, kind of single woman out in London. And, you know, I had some pictures taken and she said, I actually just felt really, really sad when I got them through and I just thought actually you are living the dream and that's that's you know I, I want a piece of that and so you know it was it was the picket bench dream totally and then about two years ago for me totally out of the blue he sort of started behaving in a way that you know I would never have expected him to behave he was talking to me in a way I would never expect to say he was staying out he wasn't coming back he was just you know it was kind of he was drinking more he was doing all those things and uh, it he, he, and suddenly he just said, I want out, I, you know, I don't love you or I don't love you in that way anymore. And and to me, it was sort of a total shock and it was totally devastating. So you weren't expecting that at all? No, absolutely not. I mean, you know, sometimes you look back in hindsight and you think, OK, maybe there were signs, but actually still now they were... They were no different from from all the things that my friends were going through, you know, their relationships, you know, sort of tetchy about, you know, money and who's lo who's stacking the dishwasher correctly and all that kind of stuff. But nothing that would have ever made me think that was on the horizon. And I heard you say in another interview that you, you tried to make it work uh, for a few months and thought maybe you could get through this, but that actually you couldn't. And it was over. Um, he obviously then left. I think... For, for people watching, what survival tactics can you share from from the moment he left? You know, that is an incredibly, incredibly hard thing to deal with after, what, nearly 20 years together. How do you get through that? And also for people in, in relationships that, you know, they might be six months, they might have thought they're the one. What advice can you share for people who might be going through something similar to, to get through it? Because hard to pick yourself up after that and how did you manage it it really is unbelievably hard and, and I think it's important to say you know it could be a 15-year marriage it could be a one-year relationship it could be you know it could be a six-month relationship I don't think it I, I don't think it makes it any worse if it's if it's longer I think it's how bad you feel and everyone knows that heartbreak is like the worst feeling isn't it and That's so the I, common denominator here, isn't it? It's heartbreak. It's just so grim. And I think, you know, I started to, I wrote this piece for Red because I, I I, that's what I do. That's how I that's how I sort of get through things. And I interviewed experts and I watched a lot and I read a lot. And it made me realise that actually so much of so much of heartbreak it helps you if you can understand what's going on in your body. So 
Um, I guess that there are some really simple things that you can do. One of them is gratitude, I think, because ultimately, even though you've been dealt an absolute curveball, actually, if you go to bed every night and just think, okay, what have I got? I've got family supporting me. I've got friends. I'm in a warm bed. You know, all these things just honestly, they just retrain your brain. Choosing to see the positives. Yeah. And focus on those. Absolutely. And I know that's really hard at the time, but it's, it's totally true. And then I think it's understanding that actually your body is going through a withdrawal process so in the same way that an addict craves crack you are craving your ex like when they've done studies on the brain that is what is happening you're kind of craving them so what it makes you do is sort of stalk them on the internet or send them a message even if it's a crappy one you know anything to connect with them because your brain is craving them so in a way, it's sort of understanding that you have to go through that cold turkey. If you can, so if you've got kids, you can't go through the cold turkey, but you have to kind of maintain a distance. How, how, how do you stop craving them? How, how do you, what mechanisms do you put in place? Is it about keeping busy? Is it about a network? Is it about, what can people do? Because that's such a good point. You've got to I tie think, your hands behind your back and, and not stalk them or message them or whatever it is. I mean, I think just the very fact of understanding that that's what your body's doing helps you to to not do that. And um, I think, again, what I would do is I would I would call a friend in that moment, a bit like, you know, if you're if you're a dieter or if you're a you know, if you're trying to do exercise, it's so helpful if you've got a buddy, basically. Yeah. So so you're focusing on the positives, you're building up a network of uh, a support system of friends. Um, any other any other tips and tricks? For Absolutely. I mean, I th- I read this uh, Buddhist piece about um, it was called the two arrows of suffering. And there's the suffering that you're in at the moment, and there's the suffering that you're thinking is coming. So the perceived suffering. So for me, it was very much about okay, how do I feel in the moment? What am I dealing with now? But I'm not going to worry that. I might lose the house or I'm not going to worry that no one's ever going to love me again, or I'm not going to worry about all of those things. Of course I did a bit, but I, by understanding that those are worries that haven't actually come to fruition yet, and they may well not do try to just be in the moment. Then if you can go for a run, if you can do exercise, you are going to feel so much better. Like not only are you going to feel so much better that you're doing something for yourself, but actually you're changing up your mood. Yeah. Your physical, your physical health impacts your mental health so much. It sounds superficial, but you know, putting some makeup on and some clothes, I imagine just does make you feel better. Put your makeup on, have the shower, all those things you're going to feel better for them. Um, And so I think that, you know, eating well, all of these sounds sort of so wishy-washy and like, and I think on a really serious um, thing, then actually just going to the doctor, if you feel like for me, you know, my whole world had collapsed and I was I was literally trembling I did an interview with Caroline Barnes the makeup artist and she came to do my makeup she said I was literally physically trembling so I was losing so much weight and I couldn't think straight and so actually the doctor said to me you know you you need some anti-anxiety medication at this moment to get you through so in all seriousness that is another thing that got Mm. me through you know Mm. not to be done lightly but you know it's it's there for a reason how uh, great advice great advice um Thank you. How, how have you coped in lockdown? Because there are a lot of people, I think, just right now on their own. Relationships have ended in lockdown. I've heard some, I've heard some sad stories from, you know, girls in their 20s through to, to people with families. How are you? And it's a really, it's a real testing point for people, as we can see by the divorce rates. How have you, how have you managed being on your own? Because I'm sure there are a lot of women um, listening who are on their own too. What, what, would, what advice would you give them? I would say firstly I'm really sorry this has happened to you now because all those things we do to sort of cheer ourselves up the kind of going out with the girlfriends the going out on dates doing all of that kind of stuff isn't there so I would say absolutely you know you know I think there is validity in a FaceTime call with a friend there is you know all that stuff keep up those connections because I think the temptation is to just go into ourselves and quite often when a relationship ends there's a sort of feeling of shame and I think bring that stuff into the light, tell people how you're feeling. And I too am getting so many messages from women, some of whom are trapped in a house with their boyfriend who's behaving horrendously, you know, or their husband. And I just feel so sad for them. So I think if you can create a sort of some kind of space where you can go to, and and this really amazing woman called Nahid de Baglioni, I don't think I've said that right, but she teaches the human method. 
she said if you can make your space really comfortable and cozy if you wrap yourself in a blanket if you get yourself a hot water bottle all those things just kind of help inch you along the road to recovery and in the book I talk about how it's a it's a it follows you know recovery follows the same pathway as grief so you know denial anger growth you know all those things and so to realize that you're on this path and anything that just inches you through in those first days another mm. day is another day survived mm. basically one step in front of the other one day at a time yeah absolutely well look rosie you have written a book it's called how to heal a broken heart it's out in february and um, for people that um, have felt a connection with what you've said today. Get your hands on a copy. Um, I'm hearing great, great things. Um, masses of luck with the book. Thank you for joining us. Can we finish on a positive? Um, just before we go, we're nearly out of time, but um, might this be the best thing that could happen to you, to somebody? You're still, you're, you're glowing and gorgeous, and God, I've got hair envy. Um, you're looking well on it um you're looking well on it so i would leave us with some some positive words for people who might be feeling sad and lonely at this time absolutely and i think you know uh the, the tv presenter amanda byron said to me it's a gift when i interviewed her and and i think it absolutely is you know everyone deserves to be in their relationship where they are you know where they're loved and they're respected and then also i just think you know you kind of for me, I've learned that I can survive on my own. I've learned that I've got me. And so therefore anything else, any relationship is a cherry on a cake. I don't need it to survive. It's, it's like a, it's an extra thing. So in a way I have so much more strength and belief in myself. And I think that is what people need to realize. They can do it. They will be okay. And actually they will come out better for it. Oh, you're giving me goosebumps with that. Rosie, thank you. Uh, it's been lovely to talk to you. As I said, the book, uh, How to Heal a Broken Heart is out in February. Rosie, come again. Let's do it in person. Let's talk on a podcast. There's so much to say. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you very much. Lovely to see you. Bye. Thank you to Heather and, of course, to Rosie. No doubt your story will have resonated with so many people. Now, following on from Georgie last week, I'm going to finish today by sharing three things I'm loving right now. The first of which is David Tennant's podcast, which isn't exactly new, but is definitely getting me through those daily walks. He interviews some of my favourite people from across the entire showbiz spectrum. And I actually only looked it up in the first place to find an interview with Dan Levy from Schitt's Creek, the showrunner and star of Schitt's Creek. His interview with David Tennant is so interesting. If you're into Schitt's Creek, it's so worth a listen. I listened to Tina Fey on my way in here today. Again, so much good showbiz backstage gossip. Um, and also Chris Jumbo, who is the star of The Good Wife and The Good Fight. There's basically a little bit of something for everybody. They're full hour interviews, super interesting, super juicy, and as I say, really good accompaniment to those daily walks. The second thing I'm loving right now, I'm afraid it is loungewear. Georgie and I did a live this week and everybody said they were over loungewear, so I'm sorry, but I do think this is a recommendation that people are going to love. This is a Ghani hoodie, Ghani, the super cool Scandi brand that everybody has loved for a while now. And I'm now of the belief that if you're going to buy anything loungewear, you should just buy one really good piece that is gonna look good on your Zoom calls. I feel quite smart in my Ghani hoodie, despite the fact that it's a hoodie, um, but that also you're gonna be able to wear after lockdown. It's got these really flattering side vents, which mean you can kind of tuck in the front. Um, and it's just a slightly smarter, more elevated way to do that comfy off-duty look. So that's it. I'm done on the loungewear front now, but now I've got that one key piece. I feel like that wardrobe is, is looking pretty strong. The third and final thing I have to recommend is, it's rather vain, I'm afraid, but I should add the disclaimer that I didn't actually buy this for myself. It was quite a rogue Christmas present that has ended up being rather useful. It is a desktop ring light. And if, like so many of us are, you are staring at yourself on Zoom meetings all day long, it's actually really nice to just add a little bit of extra glow. Everybody has been commenting on how glowing my skin looks on Zoom at the moment, and I can assure you it is nothing other than this fantastic fluorescent ring light. It's super affordable, um, so why not just pep yourself up when you've got to stare at your face all day long um, with this little desk accessory. So that's it for today. I do hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much to all of our wonderful guests, Zoe, Rosie and Summer, plus, of course, Heather and Lou as well. 
on our next show, Georgie will be back with a handful of quick recipes by Bettina Campolucci, Bordy of Bettina's Kitchen. Plus, the amazing stylist Suzanne Delahunty is here with the first in a new styling series. Plus, there's plenty of exciting interiors and lots more. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And if you have a moment, please do leave us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and tell your friends. Bye-bye.